Hi, my name is Emily. I'm Adam. And this is our tiny home on wheels. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com forward slash Florb are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You also get 25% off if you want the full membership. I think it was your idea originally, eh? Emily was going around doing henna at like small festivals in Nova Scotia and we were going to get a van, but I worked at a school bus garage, so I kept being inside the buses when I was working on them. And they're actually pretty cheap, like our bus was 1500 bucks, and a van would have been like two, 3000 for what we were looking for, so it just made sense. The big difference is the tow is going to cost a lot more, but as far as the actual fixing, I think the prices are going to be similar. Like a school bus is the same as like a medium duty truck. So virtually any truck shop can work on them. When we left Nova Scotia, we were saying it was definitely under 10 grand. We saved a lot of money by getting a camper that was water damaged. So the floor was rotted out, but it had all the appliances. We tried to use as much as we could. And then the rest of it, Emily's grandparents' house was being torn down. So we got a bunch of like kind of antique stuff out of the house. So we didn't spend a lot there. Probably 12,000 bucks we've got into it now, including the cost of the bus. Whenever it was that we were done, it was like 70% done and then we just yeah. said the hell with it. There's still stuff that we're working on yeah. inside. It's like a never ending project, I feel. Hey, this is our bus. This is what 1500 bucks gets you in Nova Scotia. It's got a 7.3 diesel engine in it. It's a pretty common one, so if it breaks down, you can get parts at like a Napa or Lord Corps or whatever. The body on it is a Corbet, so it's an international truck chassis. Pretty much if you're buying a bus, you want to make sure the engine isn't a Mercedes or a Max Force. I've seen a lot of them blow up and they bankrupted a lot of school boards and stuff. So, Other than that, just that it's in good shape and it's been taken care of. I talked to the mechanics at the bus garage that had this bus. They said they had like a hundred of them. They were pretty reliable. We looked for one that had the storage already because we thought it would cost a fair bit to make our own storage. This one is just a uh, propane. We just use barbecue tanks so that if we run out, we can exchange one at a gas station or something if there wasn't like bulk propane around. That's for the propane fridge. We don't get much sun all winter. It pretty much rains all the time. I think you'd have a really hard time running a fridge off solar here, unless you have a massive, massive system. That's the exhaust for our, our Webasto heater that runs off the diesel that's in our fuel tank. And it just blasts heat, it's really good. So we have a wood stove that warms the front of the bus up, but it goes out after a few hours because it's so tiny. It's just like a, basically a miniature furnace that's tapped into your fuel tank. This is where I set my motorbike when we're traveling. We went a little bit heavy on it with the deck too, like we've got pretty big beams and stuff under it. Because the axle is like probably like 25 feet in front of the back bumper, it swings out into the other lane. So if I had it to do over, I'd make this like half as long, just barely enough to get the motorbike on. Like tiny villages and stuff, it just gets really hectic. This is our roof deck. Come out here, we bring our barbecue up there, use that as kind of a table. It's really good if we're on like cool beach places to camp out, you can watch the sunset. Lots of storage. We've got all our kind of summer stuff in here, like flippers and <laughs> I guess ski gear in the summer goes in there and then in the winter, vice versa. Because you're always driving down the road with like overhanging branches on your right hand side, all this stuff should really be on that side of the bus. Something I won't bother changing, but would have done Differently if I had to do over, we got a hatch here, so you can just hop back in through here, flip a little latch down and it folds up and hides out of the way. I think that chimney cat was like $200 or something crazy, but we'd always have a fire on in the morning and then we'd end up driving somewhere and the draft would really like suck the fire and make it go insane. And with that, it kind of cut that down a lot. Solar panels are just Renogy, like at 400 watts for 400 bucks. It was in a damaged box and they've been really good. The fan is a fantastic fan. It's, um, it's kind of junk, really, compared to the other ones. I don't recommend that fan. I just got it because it was cheap. A valve for our fresh water. You can fill the tank up there or put like a garden hose if you're at a campground or something. That's a vent for our hot water heater. Actually, my instructor from trade school, when I told him we were building this bus, showed up and we weren't there. And he ended up making this vent for me. <laughs> this is kind of a surprise. I told him I'd paint it so it wouldn't rust, and I never did, so hopefully he doesn't see this. That's our propane furnace. We got it out of a camper. It's really just a piece of junk. I wish I never put it in there, and I wish I had the storage space. It just uses a ton of power and a ton of propane. Between our Webasto and our wood stove, we've always got enough. 
This here is the vents to our battery bank inside. We keep the battery bank inside to keep it warm. It just kind of works better that way. And they're just six volt golf cart batteries. They're pretty cheap. For four of them, you can get them for about $800 if you shop around, something like that. We got one 460 amp 12 volt system with four batteries, and then we got two of our old Trojans because the Trojan ones wore out. We tried to do all the abuse on the old batteries. So we have six in total, but they're on separate circuits. And then I have a switch. Hi, welcome. Come on in our tiny home. It's chilly out there. So this is the front of the bus. This is the driver's area. I do have my air brakes endorsement license, so I do drive sometimes, but mostly on the straight stretches on the highway. I leave all the technical stuff to Adam. We left pretty much everything original, all the switches, panels. The only thing we did upgrade is our sound system, which we have throughout the bus. We have storage everywhere. We've used the armrests as storage. Behind our cushions, we have storage in here. We have storage underneath of the couch as well, which we put extra shoes, um, our winter gear, and then when it's winter, we switch it out for summer gear under there. Under this side of the couch, we have the four golf cart batteries, and then they run up to our inverter, charger controller. This is where all of our power runs into for our solar. Everything that we have in here is mostly thrift find, reuse, recycle. Um, we got our blankets in Mexico, pillows, local artists. Everything in here means something to us. Cubic Mini tiny wood stove here. This is the Grizzly Cubic Mini. It's quite tiny, but it does provide a lot of warmth um, in this front area of the bus. So we have this fan here to help kind of move the airflow back and kind of spread it throughout the bus. It takes very tiny little pieces of wood which kind of <laughs> provides a challenge for us in the winter, cutting it to such very small pieces to fit inside. The tiles that I got here were at a reuse it center. I got all of them for like, uh, it was like $11 for everything to build it. And they're recycled glass. So it's cool when the uh, firelight is kind of catching on the different bottles and the colors in the glass. It's really nice. Moving back, this is our kitchen area. Everything we built ourselves. Adam really enjoys cooking and so do I. So we wanted like a big kitchen area, big counter space. We got this Live Edge countertop. It was one huge piece of wood that was in a dory shop back in Nova Scotia for boat building. We had a friend cut it down for us. We get so many compliments. That's like the first thing people notice when they come in the bus is uh, the Live Edge countertop. 90% of the wood we have inside the bus is recycled. So all this old barn board is actually from my grandfather's house, which was being torn down at the time we were building our bus. So it's uh, pretty sentimental. My father is a really good woodworker. He built our house, so I learned a lot from him. It was a fun learning project, so now I feel quite confident woodworking now, I think, after building this. We bought a water-damaged camper, so we reused a lot of things out of that. The sink we got out of the camper, stove, and the uh, propane fridge. I found like when we had a big fridge, things get pushed to the back and you forget about it and you have more food waste. So I love our little fridge, works great. But there was a curve here that was just kind of awkward. So I hit it with this log, carved it out, and then I glued these little mushrooms on to just bring some cool ambiance inside. Our door recycled from my grandfather's house and I just cut it to size. Keep some extra jackets in here, towels, blankets. This is a door that's also been recycled from my grandfather's house. I took all the boards off, planed the lead paint off of them, put it all back together and I torched it and painted some cool designs on it. And yeah, this is our food pantry. Behind this door here is our closet. Found driftwood on the beach and made it into cool handles. This was just a wall. We thought we could make it to some extra storage space. So it doesn't hold much, but some sunscreen, bug spray, just little things that we can poke in there. This is our shower. Really important to Adam because he's a mechanic and he often works long, dirty, hard days. Put cedar so it's naturally water repellent and then we put a nice coat 
over it as well, some mineral oil, and then it drains out into our great water tank. Behind this door is our composting toilet, our nature's head. It's just enough room to come in and sit down. This is our bedroom area. We have a queen size bed. Our favorite thing in Mexico for sure was to park up on a beach and open this back window here, this back door. Our Webasto heater comes up through the floor here. We lose a lot of heat through the windows. So yeah, this Webasto has definitely been a lifesaver for us. We have storage under the bed, obviously. More clothes, mostly my clothes. And our 120 gallon water tank, which provides water for our shower, cooking, etc. And it's kept under the bed here so that it doesn't freeze. I've seen a lot of people now, just from working at the bus garage, people like asking me about their bus, who have bought a bus that's not a great bus. So definitely do your research. You could probably just go to whatever school bus garage is in your town and say, hey, would somebody find a bus for me for like a hundred bucks and you'd, you'd probably save yourself a lot of headache. The biggest surprise to me, I guess, is that this is a real lifestyle. In Nova Scotia, it wasn't a big thing happening there. Our big dream was to go to Alaska, but by the time we were finished the bus, it was almost winter. We stopped in Squamish, and we just met a great group of friends, and we just really fell in love with the charm here. That was my biggest surprise, I think, of diving into this. Meeting a lot of like-minded people who are also living in converted vehicles or tiny homes or alternative kind of living. I'm sure that we've all heard that one of the most common things among highly successful people is that they read a lot of books. But sometimes you just don't have the time to read all the books that you would like. And that's where today's sponsor Blinkist comes in handy. Blinkist condenses the best insights from over 3000 nonfiction books into just 15 minutes that you can either read or listen to like a podcast. One of the ways that I really like to use Blinkist is to review books that I've read in the past to refresh my mind of their key points, which I've done multiple times with Charles Duhigg's great book, The Power of Habit. Another way that I like to use Blinkist is to expose myself to many different ideas in one category, for example, psychology. In one week, I can expose myself to many different books and many different ideas in that category. And if one of those books really stands out from the rest, then I can go back and listen to the audiobook to get all the nuance. And all of this you can do in the same app of Blinkist because premium Blinkist subscribers get special membership pricing of up to 65% off retail price of audiobooks. And Blinkist has a great offer for my viewers. The first 100 of you to go to Blinkist.com forward slash Florb will get unlimited access for one week to try it out completely for free. You can cancel at any time during that period, but if you decide that you really love the app, you will get 25% off of the full membership pricing if you would like to get the full membership. So click the link, check it out. It's a great app. I highly recommend it and have a great week.